In this video, we're going to look at designing an experiment, for example, finding the rate of respiration at different temperatures. So by the end of this lesson, you should be able to use the independent variable, dependent variable, and key variables, so state them with their units. Now, if you ask to design an experiment, it's important to think about the different points that you need to include. So in this example, you ask to design a procedure to use this apparatus to find the effect of temperature on the rate of respiration. So quickly sketch down this diagram so that you can refer to it as we go through the different points. Now there are three variables that you must always include when designing an experiment. The first is the independent variable is what you control. The dependent variable is what you record or calculate. And then the key variables are factors that must be kept constant throughout the experiment. So the independent variable is the one that you control. And you need to explain how you will change this variable. State the range and the number of times you will vary it. State the units that you will use. So for example, in this experiment, we need to vary the temperature in degrees Celsius. So yeast will be inactive below 20 degrees Celsius, and enzymes will denature above 50 degrees Celsius in yeast. So you need to state that you will use five different temperatures within this range of 20 degrees Celsius to 50 degrees Celsius. The dependent variable is what you are recording or calculating. For example, in this experiment you are calculating the rate. So this is the distance in millimeters the water drop moves in a set time, for example, per minute. You need to explain how you will make your recordings. You need to explain how the apparatus will be reused and reset between the readings. So for example, you can draw the air out, the clip on the left, to pull the water drop back to the start. You need to outline the calculations that you will make. For example, distance in millimeters divided by time in minutes. State the units that you will use and how many repeats that you will do. So usually you take three readings and then find an average. And lastly, you need to outline how you may use a table or graph. Now the key variables are factors that must be kept constant. So for example, use the same concentration and volume of yeast at each temperature and use the same concentration of sugar at each temperature. You need to explain how you will keep, be, <clears throat> keep them constant. Now remember to leave the apparatus at each temperature for about five minutes so that the yeast is all at the same temperature before you start the experiment or start taking the readings. So what do I mean by this? Well, you've got this apparatus. You're going to put it into a thermostatically controlled water bath, and you're going to leave it there for five minutes so that the yeast inside your solution has got to that temperature before you start taking the readings. And then you need to outline the safety measures that you will take during the experiment. So this is what we call a low-risk experiment, but many experiments will involve using chemicals. So if they are using chemicals that are dangerous, you need to state that you will use gloves and safety goggles when handling the chemicals. So in summary, we looked at designing experiments, so looking at the independent variable, the dependent variable, and the key variables. You need to state the units and how you'll measure these variables. And you need to also state whether the experiment is low risk or high risk and the precautions that you would take. And that concludes our lesson. The end.